Last time we looked at the catalog manager in the context of refactoring duplication out of our components and it was more a look at the React side of things, how you can use the semantics of HTML to compose elements and how refactoring there applies to the same principles as you would use to refactor duplication out of your code. Today I'd like to show you how the catalog manager has progressed uh, and some of the features we have added and then take a look at Flux and Redux as the implementation of Flux that we're using to manage the state. Uh, and some of the advantages and benefits that it brings. And we'll also go through briefly just adding a feature um, to be able to create a set. When we last left off, all we were doing was rendering the list of media types and uh, a very brief list of sets um, from stub data. And that's coming from an API now. So if I click on one of these sets, I'm actually loading the set contents. I can select items in a set uh, as a precursor to being able to add items to a set, which we don't have support for yet. Uh, I can also increase the size of these thumbnails uh, to get a better view if I want of these things. I can paginate through them. And those are some of the features that we've added so far. Uh, and all of this is being managed via React for rendering components and Redux for managing state um, and sort of unidirectional information flow through the Catalog Manager app. If you're not familiar with Flux or Redux, it's fairly simple. Here's a diagram that you can check out on the Facebook docs. Um, basically, the idea is that all of your data, as it says here, is going to flow through a single direction in your application. Um, and this minimal set of structure, what I've found after having worked on things like Backbone apps or Angular apps um, that use things maybe like PubSub you've used in the past uh, that have a non-unidirectional data flow is that it becomes very hard if you get into an app of any significant complexity to think and reason uh, well about how the information is flowing and, and uh, callbacks and listeners to events, it just gets into a big mess. So Flux provides a minimal set of structure where um, actions uh, provide information to a dispatcher, which provides information to a store, which fires callbacks, which um, then are used to re-render a view component. If we take a look down here a little bit more, um, we can see that views themselves can also trigger actions, but then it loops back to the dispatcher, uh, which triggers a, an action creator, which triggers a method into the store, which causes re-rendering of the view. So this is the essential life cycle of events that we want to have happen. So how does this work in the context of Catalog Manager? Let's take a look at some code. The first thing we'll look at is um, the shape of our state. And we can do that by going into assets, JS catalog manager app, and look at the initial state file. And uh, if you've watched any of Dan Abramov's tutorials uh, on this stuff, you'll know that one of the things he says you should start with is designing the shape of your state. Uh, in Redux and in Flux, the idea is that you have a single source of truth for all your state. So right now, this is our initial state, um, and all of the keys represent pieces of the state that are currently being controlled by catalog manager. Um, so the media grid, grow height, media grid row height at 125 maps to the default value for this slider over here that changes the size of the images. Um, the page number maps to the default page number when you load the page, which is page one. Uh, the media is the list of media that are rendered in this grid. The sets are the list of sets that are rendered on the left here. This is all sort of persisted application state that's derived from things that are coming from our API requests. The stuff on the top is all UI related stuff. So selected set ID is controlling which set uh, has the blue highlight and selected media IDs is just a list of media IDs that get uh, modified when I add things to this. So this is our state tree. Let's look again at the main JSX file and take a little bit of a look at how this application is structured. Uh, when we last looked, we didn't have all of these dependencies, so let's walk through them sort of gently from the beginning. Our render method and the mount point for our component is a element in the DOM called root, and what we're rendering is this JSX expression, and remember JSX expressions really just map uh, when they're compiled to JavaScript function calls, specifically react.createElement. So if you're wondering like about how all this language works, JSX is just a domain-specific language that uses the semantics of HTML, but maps to JavaScript function calls on react.createElement um, under the hood. So the first thing you'll notice is that we have this provider, and a provider is something that um, the React Redux library gives you 
because you can use Redux in a non-React context. It's just an implementation of Flux, which is a way to manage inf unidirectional information flow through your application. Um, but the provider is the first thing we need. And what provider does is it takes a store, a reference to a store. Uh, in this case, our store is being called from create store from Redux. Um, and provider makes that store available to all of the container components within our application. And we'll talk a little bit later about what the difference between a container and a component is uh, as it relates to Redux. Um, so let's jump back to the store. The store is generated from this create store method from Redux. And what it takes is the initial state, uh, which we can see here, and a list of reducers. Um, and reducers we'll take a look at in a set and then any middleware that we're using and what we're using is something called thunk middleware which we'll take a look at when we get into adding an asynchronous action to create a set um, but all of these things combined the initial state the uh, the reducers and the um, the middleware give us the store uh, and we'll take a look at each one of these things as we add the feature to create a set so again, provider wrapping our application. The root application is catalog manager. Style root is specific to Radium, which uh, I'll dig into in, a, in another screencast. But the only thing you really need to know here is that you'll need a provider in order to have a sane way to not have to pass the store to every component that you add in your application. Um, React Redux takes care of that for us with this component. If we jump into Catalog Manager, we can see that the import is coming from Components and Catalog Manager JSX. And if we look in the folder structure over here, we can see that we have two folders, one called Components and one called Containers. And we'll dive into a little bit more of that. But first, to get started, let's look in Catalog Manager. So we're going to go next. So here's our Catalog Manager. And it's comprised of another uh, a number of other components and containers. Um, so in this case, Content Filter is the one that we want to work with. Content filter, if we open React DevTools, which you can install as a Chrome extension, uh, and we sort of expand this out. There's our provider. Here's the style root. Here's our catalog manager. Here's our container. Here's our content filter. I want to add the button that's going to create a set up here. So let's do that to start. Uh, so we will go into content filter. And if you're unsure of where these um, JSX expressions come from, you can always use the import as your clue because they are just JavaScript functions that are exported. So let's look at content filter.jsx. Here it is. And we want to add a button. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, button, we're going to use the bootstrap default styling. Button default, button small. And let's do that to start and say create set. And let's say we want to float it to the, the right. So let's add a style property. So that was float right. And let's see if that shows up. Just to get a sanity check that our UI composition is working. Just have to wait for the server to restart. Assuming everything went good with the compile. There we go. So now I have create set. It doesn't do anything because we haven't wired it up, but that's how we can sort of jump in and, and add the, the UI piece. So this, remember, is a presentational component. And Redux, if you read the documentation, delineates between two types of components, a presentational component and a container component. Um, a presentational component, anything in the components folder that I've got here, is for style information only and generally controls the look and feel of things. A container component, um, however, is responsible for taking um, some additional pieces of the state and mapping them into the presentational component in a way giving us sort of an encapsulated piece. Let's take a look at an example. So the media grid, uh, if we look at its definition here, remember it's a presentational component. Um, and in Redux land and sort of the ideal for React is the way that you create uh, components is you can do a couple of things. You can call react react .create element, or sorry react .create class. Uh, if you're in ES5, you can um, class my thing extends react .component in ES6. Um, the other way is just to create a function that takes props um, and returns uh, the JSX expression or the the uh, returns the value that is a, a 
an output of its props. And this is the way that um, the React doc say is ideal, just because then you have stateless components. In this case, it's sort of not really stateless because we're using Redux to give pieces of the state tree to this component, but they are sort of controlled by um, the container component, which we'll take a look at. So this is our presentational component for Media Grid. Uh, and if I click on one of these, there we go, got some images. That's the Media Grid is what displays these images. Um, and you'll notice that I'm destructuring some of the props like we looked at in the last video. Uh, an event handler on media click or an action. Um, uh, media selected media IDs and media grid row height. And these three are the pieces of the state tree, the, the subset um, that this component is aware of. So where do they get those from? They get those from the container component that connects this all together. So if we look at media grid, we can take a look at selected media. Um, which is the container component. And it, it pulls in the presentational component and then it has somewhat of an interface. This is a convention um, within React Redux. But the first thing it does is import connect and the connect method is used to connect pieces from, or a function that returns pieces from the state and another function that returns a dispatch method, which is how we get our store.dispatch um, interactions in, in play. And it maps those onto props for the presentational component. So it's taking all of this stuff from the state, this thing, and merging it into an object, and then passing that as props to the presentational component. We can see that down here. I'm connecting, mapping the state to props, mapping the dispatch to props. I have a new component. I've just chosen to call it selected media uh, because that's what this component controls. Um, but it's using the connect returns a function, so I'm passing in the presentational component here and then exporting the container component. And container components and presentational components can be used in JSX expressions interchangeably. So if we look at uh, catalog manager, we can see that selected media is my container component and it's got the information from the Redux store that's necessary plus the um, actions uh, the, the, the things that I might potentially dispatch in this, in this case when I click on one of the uh, um, media pieces, there's an on media click. And that's gonna fire that. So if we jump back to select media, we can see that I have on media click and it, uh, the map dispatch to props, when you call it with connect, it gets dispatch, which is bound to the store. And we can dispatch actions on the store. So in this case, we want to dispatch an action with a type of select media and a payload of the selected media ID. Um, and where these are handled to sort of complete the loop is in our reducers. If you remember back in main.jsx, we also passed our root reducer from reducers index. So let's take a look at that. So here's reducers. And reducers is, you can have multiple reducers. In this case, we've got one reducer, but it's a simple function that takes a state and an action. Um, and it's responsible for returning a new object that is going to replace the state object. We're not using immutable JS, um, which you could use with this, but we are creating new objects and instead of mutating, um, which is sort of the default desired output when you're working with Redux. So a reducer takes, again, the state and the action and figures out how to update this state tree, um, the components of it, or actually how to replace it completely, uh, but only replacing certain pieces of it um, dynamically. So in this case, when I select the media, we generate a new selection using just pure JavaScript functions and some help from Lodash. Uh, to figure out um, how to toggle these and generate a new list of IDs. The thing that we return from this switch statement based on the action type um, is uh, a new object um, that is merged with our existing state and then overrides just the piece of state that's changing, so selected media IDs. So when I click on these and I look in the console and I take a look at selected media IDs, I can see that those things are changing. So that's dispatch. Um, reducers to figure out how to get a new piece of information into the into the state of the store uh, and then there's actions as well and actions is what we're going to add um, when we're working with the feature that we want to add so the interesting thing about content filter if we jump back to catalog manager Again, it's right now a presentational component. It's not a container. So it doesn't have any information in this props because there is nothing dynamic about it. It was purely just something I started with for markup. Um, but we added uh, the, the button there. 
but we want to create a connected component or a, uh, a container component that has information about the state tree. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to change this to come from containers and I'm going to change it from content filter, which is specific to this piece of UI, these filter um, boxes and, and the button to call it something else. So I'm going to change it from content filter to catalog manager controls. So let's go ahead and create that. And I'm going to grab some boilerplate from another file. We need connect. So the, the things that we need in our container component, we need connect to be able to create our connected component. Then we need the presentational component. So in this case, I'm going to pull content filter JSX from components content filter. Uh, I'm going to change this name from selected media to catalog manager controls. And then I'm going to change the presentational component that I passed here in here from media grid to content filter. So thinking of what I need to create a set, I actually don't need anything from the state tree. Um, so I'm going to get rid of all of these keys that were specific to the media grid filter from this function called map state to props. And when I click on this uh, button, I'm going to have not on media click, I'm going to have on create set click. I'm going to take uh, the set name, and then I'm going to dispatch a different event. Um, and you can see here the interface uh, for this stuff. Generally, map dispatch to props and map state to props are, they're, they're not forced on you. This is just sort of convention. But these two functions are passed into that connect function. Connect um, will take map state to props, map dispatch to props, and then the presentational component return a new component that we can bind to. So let's say on create set click name and for now let's just console.log the name to see if we can get the information workflow working. So we've created our container component and now we need to go back to catalog manager and we're rendering that component. Let's see if we got any compiler errors. Oh, it's not JSX, it's just JS. Let's see if that makes it happy. That looks a bit better. So now if we render this, And if I hit create set, uh, I think I need to update my reference. So in my connected component or my container component, I called it on create set click. So now I need to go back into my presentational component, the content filter, and update that. And I can destructure that out of the props. Remember the, um, let me split this in two so it's a little easier to follow. The name of these functions should give you a clue, but map state to props and map dispatch to props, what Redux is doing is getting rid of the state argument that normal React components are comprised of props and state. In Redux, uh, our functions are pure functions that are uh, the result of taking it only in props and returning an expression. So let's destructure off our event handler on create set click. And I don't think I actually bound it to anything. Uh, oh, uh, I think I'm actually pulling it in wrong there. I want to be in content filter. So let's do it there. On create set click. So we'll destructure that off the props that we're getting from our container component. Then we'll add our binding here. So we can say on click equals an anonymous function and we can call on create set click and let's just give it a hard coded name for now. Dave's set. Let's see if the compilation worked. Looks like it should be good. So what I expect is now I should be dispatching um, or, or calling the, the method that exists on the props that I'm getting from that presentational component. There we go. So that's not very useful. We need to grab the input from the user. So let's do that um, and let's just prototype it with uh, window.prompt. So let's say let set name equals false. And if set name uh, is equal to window.prompt, um, enter set name. So if that's true, we should have a truthy value. Then we can do this. And we can pass in that value. 
So this is taking, uh, basically generating an action. So on create set click is going to um, generate or, or consume an action. Our UI is going to uh, say, hey, here's the action that I want to do. And eventually the dispatch method is going to get called um, so that the store can get called so that it can go and re-render all of the components that um, map to that state changing. So in this case, if we come here, uh, we should still see this and we should actually see the whole loop completed with the value that we put into the window prompt. So I can say Dave, and there it is, Dave's, and Ralph's. So there we go. Um, that's not very useful. We actually want to hit our endpoint. So right now we've only mapped to um, a callback method that exists on our container component. We haven't done anything with dispatch. Um, so that's the next step. Uh, and we'll want to dispatch an event, or an action rather, that maps to something that lives in our reducer tree. And so if we take a look back at reducers, back here you can see all of this stuff, select set, select media, select items page. Um, the interesting thing about create set is we're not going to be mutating any piece of the state. Uh, the flow is going to go like this. We want to create set, get the input from the user. If they have inf input and it's valid, then we want to pass that along to some API. And then uh, when we get a response, we want to be able to receive the sets again. That's the sort of workflow. Uh, so in this case, we're going to want to pull in an action to dispatch here. So let's import an action called create set. And we'll pull it from actions, actions index, get rid of my extra line there. And so now what we want to do is we want to call dispatch and we can using Redux thunk dispatch promise returning methods as actions, which is really cool. So normally we had dispatch type and then some payload. Uh, in this case, maybe it would be called create set. Um, but we're going to dispatch an asynchronous action, in this case, not a synchronous action. So we can do that with create set, passing along the name. So that's not going to work right now because we actually don't have that action. So let's go and create it. I've been storing all the actions in actions index. Let's take a look at this file. Um, right now for asynchronous actions, I'm using isomorphic fetch, which is a polyfill around the fetch implementation for the browser that is currently being standardized. Um, and I've got one for fetching the set items. So right now we need to export another one called create set. It takes a name. Uh, the way that this works is it's a function that returns a function because internally uh, Redux is going to transform this. Actually, Redux thunk is going to transform this into something that can be dispatched. So it's a function that takes as an argument dispatch. This is the short form of, um, of what is essentially return function dispatch in ES5. So this is down, down below is the ES6 way to do that. So we're going to get a dispatch function. And then let's dispatch right away that we are going to um, uh, create set. We don't really need to do anything other than that. Um, and maybe we can use this dispatch as like some UI hook to uh, show a spinner, for example, until we get the response back from the server. But aside from that, the next thing we want to do is fetch from our API. Uh, so we're going to fetch uh, some URL and then our request options. Uh, and then I'm going to pull all of this stuff down from the bottom. Uh, so when you're using fetch, uh, there's a method on the response object called JSON. We're going to use that to transform. Um, the request options here, the, the important things to note, credentials are same origins. By default, jQuery.ajax passes along credentials and the fetch doesn't, so we need to be explicit that we want to pass along any cookies for authentication. And then headers just being explicit about we want JSON back and we're giving JSON to these endpoints. So we're going to fetch uh, slash API catalog manager um, set. And we want this to be a post value. Uh, so, because I believe if we look in server.js, 
at my endpoints that I've got set up. Yes, a post for create set. So let's do that. So let's merge method post. Uh, we need a body. And in this case, we're going to call json.stringify on an object with name as the key and the value. So we can shortcut there. So that ends that. And then we're merging that with our default request options. We need another paren. And in this case, uh, I don't really care what the um, what the value is, because there, I believe it's just an ID that comes back when we hit the create endpoint, but I'll just leave it as that for now. And uh, we want to, once we get that, we're only getting an ID back, but we want to update the list of sets here. So first, let's see if this works. I'll just change that to response. See if we got any compiler errors. Actions, what line? 19. Oh, that was an old compiler error. So, what we did to recap is we created an action called create set. We imported that action in our connected component and we can now dispatch from the store with that function with a value, thanks to Redux Thunk. So if all goes good, we should get a response back that says it was okay. So create set doesn't work because I didn't enter anything. If I do Dave's, oh, I think I need to have an S there. Uh, let me look at my server JS. Yes, sets plural. There's an inconsistency there, so I'll need to modify that. Sets. get rid of that and then just fix that inconsistency right now. There we go. Uh, let's see if that recompiled. So I did get an object back and if we look at the network tab I can see that I posted out and it posted two sets and I got an ID back and my request payload was name, which the API endpoint wants. So that's good and I called it Dave's new set, but I don't see Dave's new set show up in the list here. So what we need to do now is dispatch another event instead of console.logging the response. So in this case, let's dispatch fetch sets, which isn't an action that we've got yet, Let's create it. Export function uh, fetch sets. Doesn't need any arguments. We're just going to call, and I'll just copy that to this boilerplate. And in this case, we're going to get rid of the merge because we don't need any of this body stuff. We just need our default request options. By default, if you don't provide anything, a fetch will be a get catalog manager sets, and then what's we'll called sets. And if you remember from the index in main, the dispatch that we're calling when we get the sets is receive sets. This is rendering it from the server side in our main file. So we can do the exact same thing here in fetch sets. We can call dispatch once we've, once we've got them from the server, we can say, Type is receive sets, and all the plumbing is set up for that already. And sets. 
So let's see if this all works end to end now. So if it's working, I should, there, I've got it now because I reloaded the page, but let's create another one called this works. And there it showed up. And if I look at the network tab, uh, let's do it again and we can see it. I should have one post request generated to create. And then I dispatched that event receive sets, uh, or I dispatched fetch sets, which then dispatched receive sets when it was done. So the thing I really like about this flow is that all the responsibility of asynchronous fetching or actions lives in one place in actions. Managing mutations to the state tree uh, happens in reducers based on the action.type property. Uh, and these are all just very simple um, JavaScript mutations. I think the most complex one right now is select media just because we have to figure out uh, if we're removing or adding to the list of selected media IDs. Um, so yeah, all of the mutations to the state tree happen in reducers. Um, connected components like catalog manager controls where we're pulling in actions, they pass along um, event handlers that dispatch actions to the store. And then the store in Redux is responsible for re-evaluating and recalling to compute the new props for a given presentational component, in this case, content filter, when something changes. And that loop makes it really easy to add this stuff um, when we're coming to add. Basically, you add UI in the presentational component. You add uh, information flow, um, like dispatching inside of the container component. You add uh, changes to the state tree inside your reducers. And you add actions um, and what happens when an action is triggered inside of your actions file. So that's Redux, and we did a quite a whirlwind tour, but I hope it helped to see the context of uh, how this all works together uh, with relation to Catalog Manager. There's going to be even more stuff that's going to happen um, with regards to user functionality for this. And uh, so far, I've been really happy with how Redux has um, en enabled me to think less about where stuff belongs and just sort of follow the very, very minimal conventions around flux and information flow in order to get things done. It's definitely made it easier from an application implementation standpoint, and it allows me to focus more effort on like uh, figuring out how to get this to look good in IE9, which actually chewed up quite a bit of time. So I hope that you've enjoyed this, and let me know if there's any other topics that you'd like to see that I could help you out with. Thanks.